the Nazis favoured two architectural styles, neither of them original. The first one was monumental, based on neoclassicism. The second one was a country style, reflecting the arts and crafts idea. Mostly used for mass housing and youth hostels, it fitted in with the feeling for the value of tradition. Youth hostels, in keeping with the landscape and with tradition, have been built for our youth, who on foot like to explore their Heimat, their homeland. Not that modern architecture was widely accepted. The controversy over the modern flat roof as against the traditional gable raged among architects long before Hitler came to power. Here too, the Nazis had an easy task. They exploited popular fear of anything modern as they did in the visual arts. Many housing estates, Siedlungen of the Weimar Republic, had been built by famous architects, some of them defenders of the modern movement. The Nazis did not reject the work which was done by these pioneers, but they did replace their modern outlook with a cult for folksy architecture. The pitched roof and shutters became powerful symbols. Homes for the working man as they've never existed before. Generous and centralized planning everywhere. The German Workers' Front fulfills a building program in line with the will of the Führer. We create homes which are in harmony with the landscape and which are traditional. Peaceful places which make men strong again. The individual home with its little garden was also seen as the best way to encourage people to have children and to weld people into one nation. The Nazis' rejection of the city and their love for the small town cashed in on popular attitudes and played on the desires felt by many for a pre-industrial age. Architecture, films, paintings and songs all praised the virtue of the Heimat, the homeland which had to be defended by the entire nation. areas of the Reich, Hitler built his Ordensburgen. The Hitler training schools, or Ordensburgen, were elite institutions for the racially pure. Imitations of medieval fortresses, they were built of stone and timber. 
In the image of its inhabitants, the architecture was stern, masculine. It stood for power and eternal values. Every facet of the buildings was the expression of Nazi ideology. The decor was simple and functional. It all helped to form the character. There were rooms to celebrate and to assemble in. The ritualized routines helped to forge a feeling of community and to extinguish any opportunity for self-doubt and questioning. A party looked after you. Here are a few glimpses into the life of these Adolf Hitler schools. Evening concerts. Education in the fine arts. The best of German youth has been chosen to be shaped in these Ordensbergen to become decent and courageous human beings. In der Kunstschmiede. Sword making. In den Schlafsälen herrscht peinlich. In the dormitories, scrupulous order and tidiness reign. It was above all the young Hitler tried to seduce with his cultural program. Doch nicht bei den Nazis. Doch. Junge, Junge. Du Mutter, die sind aber gar nicht so schlimm. Ach. Die haben abgekocht, getont und geschwommen und gesungen. Ein Lied haben die gesungen, sag ich dir. Und wie ging das noch? Das habe ich doch vergessen. Unser Fahne. Warte mal, jetzt habe ich Unser Fahne flattert und voran. Unsere Fahne flattert uns voran. Unsere Fahne ist die neue Zeit. Unsere Fahne. Komm, was siehst du denn da? Das sind doch die Nazis, Mensch. Du hast ja das gelernt, Mann. Du lass doch den Jungen, ja, der wird es erstmal aufgeschnappt. Was ist das so, wenn hier was gesungen wird, dann singst du. Völkerherz, die Signale, auf zum Letzten. Warum singst du nicht mit, was? Na los, auf zum Letzten, gefecht. Du singst ja nicht, was? Kannst du nicht, was? Du kannst nicht, was? Dann sing mal. Völker hört die Signale auf zum Letzten. Kannst du nicht singen, doch? Da weg der Bein, wenn du. Völker hört. Völker hört. Die Signale auf zum Letzten. Gefecht. Völker hört die Signale auf zum Letzten. Gefecht. Die Internationale. The love for the folksy was not the preserve of the populace. Hitler and the party elite too loved the Bavarian look. Hitler built himself a country house in Berchtesgaden where he received foreign guests and lived with Eva Braun. Martin Bormann and Hermann Goering also had country houses here. Most of them were linked by underground tunnels. The house, known as the Eagle's Nest, was built as a private retreat on the summit of Kehlstein, 2,000 meters up. To reach the Eagle's Nest, which was Hitler's and Eva Braun's tea house, you had to walk into a vaulted passage hewn into the heart of the mountain. A luxurious lift took the visitor 150 meters up to the summit. Here, the guests felt they were in the presence of the leader of the world, a man towering above the rest.
Some buildings escaped this folkloric treatment. Factories and industrial buildings did not have to be built in the fascist style. They used modern technology. The Air Force, which considered itself the aristocracy among the services, resisted traditional styles and saw to it that its buildings were modern. While Hitler took little interest in mass housing, his involvement in public buildings was total. He saw himself as the nation's artist, and above all, its architect. He liked to show off his architectural knowledge. He liked to be photographed with plans and models. He believed architecture was the finest of the arts. It was the one art which did not disappoint him, and from which new developments could be expected. The 19th century had developed a variety of architectural styles which expressed a general nostalgia for a stable traditional world. Neoclassical, neo-Gothic and even neo-Egyptian elements satisfied these longings. Hitler too preferred buildings which were already programmed this way. The Valhalla at Regensburg and the Befreiungshalle at Kelheim were two 19th century monuments which Hitler occupied for his own ends they became places of pilgrimage for the party. Hitler came here to lay a wreath in honor of Anton Bruckner, another appropriation of a cultural hero of the past. The architecture's impressive sense of antiquity and of continuity was copied in many of the classical buildings of the Third Reich. Munich was to be the capital of the movement, the new center for the party. The Königsplatz, with its neoclassical buildings, was redesigned to become one of the central shrines of Nazi ritual worship. Hitler's favorite architect, Paul Ludwig Trost, built two large party buildings. The party administration building and the Führer building formed one side of the square. They're almost identical. They carry all the hallmarks of the style the Nazis adopted for their official buildings the massive limestone porticos, the eagles and wreathed swastikas. There was the obligatory Führer balcony from which the great statesman architect could look down upon his work and his people. The heavy cornice and rows of windows emphasized the horizontal lines, giving it a fortress-like appearance. The Führer building was for official receptions and has red marble floors and two huge staircases. Originally, the walls were hung with tapestries and covered with paintings. The two adjoining temples became the altars of the new movement. 